uh, Fedora was always, the announcement was always slightly different from what was said, it was always slower than uh, predicted. But anyway, so we had um, defined uh, the buffer with the event, but woman localization.
some finite to i i where and the action of uh, on i is just by multiplying this by i is, is given by In C star, B is just so this is the action, this is T to the power F and E I. So this is, uh, we say, that, uh, so not okay, I, so I wanted to wait the I. So, um, so that means. The way we set things up, we also have that the canonical class. We don't choose the trivial action of the canonical class, but we have an, an action of weight one of the canonical class I bundle. So the action is one. So thus if we have an equivalent homomorphism from E to E tensor Ks, then it will be uh, invariant under C star if and only if the weight drops, it drops the weight by one. So, so, so thus we have an equivalent morphism T from say A E E R J. Yes, will be invariant well, if, uh, if it's of weight zero. So here, the weight of this thing is i, the weight of this thing is j plus one. So j plus one must be equal to zero. Uh, so, so i, so if uh, j is equal to i. And so uh, you can just therefore describe uh, this thing like this. So, um, and so from this, we can describe what the fixed point of is. So, thus, the fixed points are the step as follows. So, you can write, so we can write to zero. So I should say, yeah, just choose the weights to be from zero to L. I can always rescale, no, to, I can always, I can always put myself in this situation because if I multiply the whole action by a power of T, nothing changes, so I, I choose it right. So <clears throat> what are the fixed ones? So E will be written as the sum, E zero plus, some L, then our map P will always map from the I to I minus one ends of the S. Obviously, uh, so the whole map maps from the direct sum of all of them to the direct sum of them, but it maps the I part to this part. Right hand like this. Then we have zero. That's okay. Yes. And it obviously will send. Here, this one here, and this one has no other chance than going to zero. And e is still 
Now, I assume we know this. And uh, in addition, uh, you know, this, this notion of stability, if one looks carefully what it means here, uh, it shows that all these maps, uh, e, so all the maps e here must be injected, except of course for this one. So the stability is some kind of condition that the kernel has to be uh, in some sense smaller than the sheet itself, and if one works out what this means, then, then one gets this. So we have the p from Well, okay, so, so this map in particular, so this is a, this is a sub sheets of some summons of positive rank of E. And uh, so we can see, therefore, that as these maps are injective, it means that the rank of E2, E2 must be smaller than E4, E1, and so on. So uh, the ranks of these sheets form a partition. So thus, The stability condition, as you know, is uh, that somehow things which are invert under the map, so in particular things which lie in the kernel of P, have to be uh, smaller than, have to satisfy the usual stability condition. So that means if the map P is, no, is zero, then uh, uh, F E5 is stable if and only if 
E is stable as a sheet. So it follows. And it's just the modelized space of the stage. So this is the this is called the horizontal form. So one, so we have this the sum of these fixed point loci, one of the fixed point loci is just the uh, modelized space of stable sheets. But then there are others. Another one, uh, and the vertical so called vertical component is um, you know, basically you, you also can write a diagram for partition. You know? So, you know, it's like say you make a partition of, of and you write a diagram where you have the length of the individual pieces, and then it can be horizontal. Means it's just one piece, one of the other, and you can have the vertical one. So this is the partition. This is four. This one. This is the partition one, 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 one. So we can look at the vertical of all of this. Like this. So. So the vertical. And so in this case, all the sheets the EI have rank one. And later, when we study it, one would want to relate it to the other space of sheets of rank one, which is about three with each point. So now you can, I mean, I just write it down. You can write a generating function for the whole thing. You have the buffer with partition function. Here we have some complicated, so I just write. But there's some stupid three factor which uh, is not sure. But to have it correct, I can write one minus times R times F squared or times sum of what return classes and then Q to the virtual dimension of the modelized space corresponding to all class in one C2 and also I wish I could write it minus Q to this power. So Q to this power times minus one virtual dimension. And then we have this interval over that they have five, and so this total interval can be one. But this was defined by uh, this notation. Uh, okay, and so now as we have this connected these connected components of the fixed point locus, and this was done by summing over the connected components, we can write this sum of pieces corresponding to uh, these connected components. So, so By definition, we have we have this partition function this sum over or lambda of 
coefficient of r. Um, Corresponding with lambda. Where this is just the contribution. as I had described the thing. Okay. So first um we wanted this was well, somehow related to the virtual order number of the order space machines that was supposed to be part of the virtual generation function. And in fact uh, as one can see here it should be the part corresponding to the fifth point locus corresponding to the stream position R. So this is a Thomas. So the virtual well number of this modular space is a sign, which that's why I'm going to sign. Uh, minus one to the virtual dimension times uh, the contribution of the polyfluid partition, so that means the integral over the uh, n1 one to the r, so r times one. Euler number of the virtual normal model okay so this was the contribution <coughs> so in other words the contribution so this means the contribution of the, this part So why is um, that I can kind of sketch So we had seen so F phi is in this One must be fixed there. So then, if one wants to do first order deformations of this pair, uh, one can deform E, can deform phi. Now, phi is just a homomorphism. And so, you know, it's just an element in the vector space, so deforming means uh, that. So, so, so the, the tangent space. Uh, the definition of P is just the homeworks in E and S. So that's what we're looking at. But now we are, you know, we have a we are in the virtual setting, the exact dimension is zero. So the obstruction, obstruction space will be the X1 of the city. So um, now we are, so therefore, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what the text is. So thus, uh, 
On the other hand, we know what the virtual uh, end bundle to the model space of sheets is. This is x1 minus x2 without the dual. So that means this is equal to a k theory. So this is, uh, you know, here I say fiberwise, but obviously to make it into bundle, you place everything by x i p and so on to make it uh, in family. But anyway, so then this is will be equal to the minus in K theory the virtual tension bundle. So now I just put I just put fiber wise so M R T Y two so fiber A and here we have the D. And so I told you that fiberwise a normal bundle, uh, the virtual normal bundle is equal to the dual of the tangent bundle of the thing. And so therefore, this gives us that if I integrate over this modular space, Um, this one over the Euler class with the normal bundle. Then, you know, this thing is just a one life space of which I'm going to say. And okay, so. Now it has to fit. So the way it works out, you, know, you take this, then when you integrate it, you, you have this equivalent parameter t. You will take the coefficient of t to the zero of one over this. This is just uh, uh, when you work out what this means is this is just uh, that one over the Euler class of this is the same as the top term class of minus this element. No, but obviously the, the Euler class. Of Minus uh, uh, minus an element in K theory is one over the class of K theory, and not now <coughs> the Euler class is very similar to the the top term class. And the, the, in this particular case, if you work it out, because one actually is interested in taking the coefficient of t to the zero, which is what one when one integrates it, it's precisely this. So this will be uh, equal to Class is virtual that dimension. This modular space of the virtual tension bundle uh, 
we have the dual. So this is we get uh, minus one. So this is minus one. So this was maybe not super precise, but uh, this is how it works out. And <coughs> so, um, so therefore, we see at least uh, one can compute easily uh, uh, the contribution of one component in, in the sense that uh, we know how this relates to things that we know from before. Um, now, uh, what? What? Ah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I I, I don't know why I wrote this. I, I got uh, I obviously wanted to like ask. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Sorry. Obviously, it is. I hope for it's a bit. I hope. Uh, it was not computing. Obviously, I wanted uh, to say that it's this because that's the model that basically keeps the base of filing that the, the other one. Okay. So, um, so now there's another theorem which maybe I will not try also. Thomas. That um, the most of this, the contributions of most of these uh, fixed point rules are actually zero, for, of many of them are zero. Namely, this is the following so statement. So if I look at this integral over n lambda in star, that is again asking. Um, over one over the virtual normal bundle, Euler class of the virtual normal bundle. This will be zero. Unless the partition has a very simple shape, namely, unless the partition, if you write the diagram for it, is a rectangle. So, all the it's, it's partition is an equal part. Unless the lambda is written as R1, R1. Some number t times r. So, in particular, so I mean, I cannot explain here how one proves that. So, there is a it's done via uh, some technique which is called uh, a cross section localization, but I, I haven't. Uh, now, but anyway, but can prove this thing. So now this implies, so in particular, if R is a prime number, there are only uh, two conclusions. So we can write set the S H C one so R. And I would call these ones are horizontal variables.
At least I have this is the word I want to talk about. So and now we want to um yeah, maybe I want to briefly introduce uh, so there is a This conjecture, which somehow relates to this to the forms, which one can also uh, formulate in terms of this uh, partition function. And so I can let me. Just for those who don't know, we did one more log forms of functions, but not too much. So uh, one log form of a k is a polymorphic function. Complex R plane, so the locus C, where the imaginary part of tau is bigger than zero, so the complex numbers, which satisfies some nice equation of the familiar transformation. Which is the weight of tau. So for all A, B, C, D, and SF is equal to tau. Now, so we have a sometimes this says essentially up to sign two generators, we have T, which is this element. Corresponds under the action that we do here tau goes to tau plus one. And we have S, other generators, which is implied like this, which corresponds to tau goes to minus one. So basically, uh, we should have this very property. And in addition, one wants some kind of um, function supposed to be holomorphic, but one also has the notion of being holomorphic infinity. Is, uh, um, you know, as it's invariant, so it says here, if you look at it, that it's invariant under tau goes to tau plus one, so it has a Fourier development, uh, of tau is can be written as sum for n a n to n a n is a some, some complex number and now if all of this could be all n could be in, in the integers but we allow only for positive ones that's what's called for more infinity and the modular function Is a quotient of two holomorphic uh, of two molar forms of the same Okay, 
And uh, so it's clear from the definition that modular functions form a field. And um, we can also uh, consider modular forms for subgroups of S to Z. For instance, we can look at uh, gamma zero n, which would be a set of all S to Z, such that this. Uh, C is congruent to zero one. Somebody, I don't know, somebody's calling. <laughs> Tau, 
<coughs> and so, but it is a tiny, you know, some tiny extra factor, so r minus one OS. And we have a, also a modular factor, so r times r by e uh, to the power of one and another OS by, by two. Uh, it's a little bit that it transforms like a polar form of weight one half of polar. But uh, it transforms this SUR thing into this one. So this would be this conjecture. And uh, it's not here now, but um, what one finds out is that um, if, if you look how it's written here, um, the, this um, way, this uh, transformation, uh, tau goes to minus one over tau, will somehow exchange the horizontal part and the vertical part. So that if one believes in this conjecture and uh, uh, the range is prime number, one only has to compute one of them. The other one is determined by this. In addition, obviously, one wants to check in this conjecture. Okay, so this is now. Um, now I want to study these vertical of written invariants. I want to start out by stating here, Lara, that it takes extra time at a point in time. Sketch two, which tells us something about the structure of the virtual topic. Then later we will see how the structure comes from the geometry of the model. So yeah. First state the theorem that Apu say otherwise you might be find it. Each okay. first I just write it. So this is the theorem. Surface with the g greater than zero and uh, say h one zero. And then uh, we fix the uh, rank, assume the rank is some fixed rank, uh, so fixed rank r. So there exists some. Universal power series C zero C I J I one I is for J is for um, one um, which are some power series in some of the series in the Q such that for it for all s as above for each temple we have that this vertical of the written invariants have been written as follows but there are some Okay, this is the term, but anyway, minus one with the r minus one over r times delta q to the r, 
So right here. So right. Um, yeah, okay. This is for the power. And then we have here some data we are one two right for eight of q the power minus a squared. Okay, so I will have to write down what this functions are, and then now we have our universe. Our series. So first we have here I zero to the S squared. And then at some time some beta in the homology. The contribution only with the first chance task that we have given. Is congruent modulo R to um, uh -uh, sorry, yeah, I should say theta one or theta R minus one equal of elements in this R minus one, then only at zero unless the sum of these classes. Multiplied by i is a so here with this delta, I mean delta uh, uh, so delta a e for homology classes is equal to one if. Uh, a minus b is what? zero, but zero in r, and so if it is divisible by r, zero otherwise. So it's like we compute the, the difference whether they equal or not in the commons you want r. So we have this, and then uh, finish with the. Uh, we now have this taken when we take the product of what is i, 1 to r minus 1, if we have a written invariance, beta i, and we take the product of all i is more than equal to j, c, i, j. Okay, so we have this very complicated formula. <clears throat> but then, so what we see is that, so if you remember the other fitness events, in any case, if for instance we assume that there is an, um, so let's remember that the other fitness events, so we may be at some point. In the proper definition, there are some things in red. How many folds there for the invariance of algebraic surfaces? And um, so, if, for instance, S has a connected economic curve, then, then the only classes for which the cyber fitting invariants are not zero are so, default cyber fitting classes only. Classes are zero and yes. So, so the written invariants are invariants which associate the number to any class in the second homology. And this number is most of the time zero. For instance, in the case that uh, that the that the S is a connected canonical curve, then there are only these two. And in this case, the Zabbat-Fitman invariants 
of 0 is equal to 1, and the third would be the yes. minus 1 for this calculus. So these are not as mysterious as this. In, in algebraic geometry, they are very simple. And so this is the description here. So I have here a mode. Let's see, we have some fixed policies which I maybe not explain, but you can see it's some kind of apart from the fact that I so you can see also here we have something for the minus k s squared, something for the k s squared. So this is therefore uh, there's no statement in this. No, I, this is a non trivial, this is kind of trivial. I can always I could absorb this term into this. And if I don't know what C0 is, then I also don't know what this is. So there's this thing is actually not a statement, it's just a normalization. But it, that the, the term to the power k of s is this one is a statement. But otherwise, it's some kind of universal universality statement where it's kind of similar to the one we had for the Hegel scheme of points, that certain expressions can be written universally, universally in terms of the product form. Now, we don't have quite a product formula because we also have these are written invariants, but we have a kind of theme. It says that such a thing can be written in a universal way like this. And then the only additional non trivial statement is that the term to this power is this. So, I mean, if you remember in the beginning, we had this uh, uh, kind of put all these invariants on the points where there was a one writes down some reasonable generating function that wants to create the root of zero points, then this has always a universal product form in terms of intersection numbers that are in the question. And I, however, now we have to still see what is up. Delta is equal delta, delta of Q, which also controls for the power. I cannot, this is just Q. Times product one minus q and four into n four theta, which is also there. So one and four, and then we have this theta function. This is the theta function. So theta. R minus one. So I write the R comma zero. Uh, it's a theta function. Or the AR yeah. Okay. Ah, I'm supposed to up, but at least I can write it down. Um, right. Yeah. Simple. So this is. Um, over all Q or over all say vectors B in that we are, I take Q to the inner product of B in itself, but I have to say what this inner product is. We have to say what this inner product is. And so inner product is defined by By then the PR matrix, which uh, maybe many of you know, this is a matrix. Rank yeah. R, where on the diagonal we have twos, and on the four, uh, directly next to the diagonal on both sides, we have minus one. One and so on. So we take the element in C to the R, we pair with this, and we get the number we this. This is this. Okay, so this is this formula. Now I think I kind of spread it up. So uh, I don't know. So I think I, I, I stopped here. I stated this thing, then uh, we. We have to see what this uh, expert projector means for this, and then you want to go into the detailed, uh, you want to maybe prove this and also uh, see uh, what one can say about these unknown powers in CIJ.
simple bit of this part of the global technology. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's uh, one of the things I want to, want to say. Uh, they, uh, we know them until uh, rank five. But they are, you know, they, they will be uh, some modular functions which uh, uh, you know, they get kind of complicated. So in, in the in the two case, it's very simple. That's uh, but, but uh, then the higher the rank, the more complicated. But uh, I I don't have we don't have any idea whether what there's a general formula for the arbitrary rank only in small rank. I don't know whether there's anything. It's, uh, I haven't seen any prediction. Well, I actually have. Yeah, no, I haven't seen. There was a prediction I saw, which was actually not true, but uh, uh, but otherwise I don't. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah.